even in this late stage of the design, I'm still thinking of ways to make the the shapes more interesting. I'm just trying to come up with something that hasn't been done before. This is a good area to add something new that I haven't done yet. So I'm putting in a little snake design that's holding this metal ring in his mouth. And on the end of that ring there's going to be a scroll. In the Warhammer universe you always see a bunch of little dangly bits hanging off people's armor. Like scrolls and skulls and bones. So I'm always trying to add things like that so that I can get the Warhammer feel. One thing you have to constantly be aware of when you're designing video game characters is you have to come up with the design that's actually going to be able to work in the game. I mean, you can't come up with something that's going to clip through the character all the time or something that the animators aren't going to be able to animate. Maybe they don't have the tech to do cloth sim or maybe the model doesn't have that many bones to have these big long dangly bits hanging off his front. After a while you kind of come to know the limits that your system has and you can kind of design around that. For example this scroll that I'm wrapping around his arm is probably not actually going to have any geo when it's built. What they'll probably do is they'll just paint it as a flat texture on his arm. One of the best parts about character design is painting the skin and painting in all the little veins and little details. I think those little details help sell your painting a lot. Like if you put in cracks in armor and little dents and nicks and things like that, I think it tends to make it look more real. I always hate it when armor looks perfectly pristine, like it's never been worn before. I actually need to go back and fix this ribcage because it wasn't drawn correctly before. Most of the time when I'm starting a character I'll just put something down even if it's incorrect just so that I'll have some kind of base to work from. Then I'll go back later and correct things and render it out. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with his bracers yet so I'm just kind of playing around with some different ideas. Maybe he has some more little dangly bits hanging off of it but I know that the modelers aren't going to actually be able to put that on there, so I'm going to end up having to take it off later on. I decided to go ahead and use some of the elements from his headdress on his bracers so that it kind of matches. Put those little spiky wing shapes on there and then fill them in with blue and then put the little round parts with red in the middle. This ellipse on his bracer is giving me a lot of problems, so I'm just distorting it and trying to move it around so that it looks right. I think it still looks a little off. I'll have to go back to it later and fix it. I thought it'd be cool to have little dangly bits coming off the rings, but I'm not going to be able to put it on there, so I'll take it off.
usually when I'm doing a character concept, I won't really pay much attention to the props that they're holding because they're not actually going to be built by the modeler. But this time I'm going to try and render out the sword a little bit. I've already spent so much time on the rest of the character. If I just leave the sword really scribbly, I think it'll kind of detract a little bit from the piece. I know I need to start working on the rest of the design, so I'm going to give him this really ratty loincloth. I want it to look really decayed and dirty. It should look like that it's going to just crumble into dust at any second. This guy was never actually mummified, so it's not really appropriate to have a bunch of mummy wrappings on him. So instead, I just kind of wrapped these scrolls around him in a few little places. Maybe there are just a few little remnants from his previous garb that he used to wear when he was alive. I always have a problem of not pushing my contrast enough when I first paint something. So a lot of times I'll just select it all and do a... Uh, Control shift c for PCs or Command shift c for Macs. And what that will do is it'll copy all your visible layers so that you can paste it into one layer. Once I have that new layer, I'll just do a color dodge on it. Again, for his belt, I'm just going to take existing elements that I've already used and kind of repeat them here. So I'm going to use the spikes from the headdress and the bronze and bone, also the blue. I'm going to put that red in there too.